Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. Today's video is part of a special collaboration between myself and some other crafty friends where we are going to be showcasing new products from Crafty Meraki. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create! Crafty Meraki just released some awesome new products with their Meraki Hugs release. Today, I'm going to be playing with some of the new goodies, and I'm going to be telling you how you can hop along to see what my crafty friends have created, and how you can get entered in to win $100 to their online store. I was sent the new Meraki Moments High Die Set, which is a three layer die. I love the border and the shadow that it comes with. I also received the Meraki Moments High Stamp Set and just a note stamp set. Both of these come with a big bold sentiment and some coordinating smaller ones to go with it. And last but not least, I got the Meraki Artisan Floridize in the Peony. And this is just beautiful. Now this you can die cut for option one, where you just make one of the flowers, or you can die cut three and make this cluster as it's shown. For my card today, I will be using the high die and stamp set along with the Peony Flora die. Now I will have these products as well as the other set I showed you linked down in the description box below if you want to check them out. As I mentioned earlier, my video is just one of many in a hop today. To see what the other artists have created, there is a playlist in the description box below. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. And make sure to keep watching so you can find out how to get entered into the special giveaway. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by die cutting one set of the dies. I'm using a blue for the petals and a green for the stems and leaves. The die does cut a peony that has bloomed and one that has not. So I am going to go ahead and remove the pieces for the flower that I won't need and then also take away the stems and the leaves for now. The inside of the packaging does have a nice graphic to help you put everything together, but I do want to point out that the top middle one shows you a highlighted piece there at the bottom to add, but you won't actually add that on the layer. I went ahead and just crossed this out on my pamphlet. The diagram and example on the front does show some different colored cardstocks or pieces. Now for me today, instead of trying to find three or four cardstocks that are in different shades of the same color, I'm going to be doing some ink blending for a tone on tone look. I will be adding the ink blending to four of the pieces, which you see me separate here toward the bottom of my work surface. And I'm going to be doing the two on the left in the darkest shade. So I'm going to ink up my blending brush and go over these a few times. This will be the very back layer, so I want the deepest color. You can see here when I hold up a blended and non-blended piece together what a difference that makes and it almost turns the cardstock a different color. I ink blended the second piece with kind of that same dark shade and then for the other two they're going to be a little bit lighter but I still wanted some shading on them. So I used the same brush and blended those to a nice medium blue. While I ink blend these two pieces, I wanted to tell you how you can enter to win that $100 gift card to Crafty Meraki. In my description box below is a link to a giveaway form on Rafflecopter. You will fill that out by the end of February 2024, and the winner will be announced on the Crafty Meraki community page after the contest ends. So make sure to subscribe to their channel and ring the bell for notifications. I will have the channel linked in the description box below. The pieces are ink blended, so now let's start putting the flower together. I will be using reverse tweezers and liquid glue for this, and I'm going to start by taking the largest piece, and I'm going to add the little bitty curves that go right along the edge of the flower. Again, if you have the little graphic in front of you, it's easy to figure out which one. 
I hold the little highlight piece with the reverse tweezers and then add the liquid glue to the back. Because it is liquid, you have a little bit of wiggle time to move these pieces around so they fit right up snug against that outline of the flower. Now once these first two little pieces, the highlights are in place, I'm going to take the other piece that I did the darkest blending on and if you notice on the dies, there are tiny triangles and that is going to help you with alignment. So you'll kind of get it aligned with the petal there on the left, but then you also want to make sure that the triangles fit on top of each other. I continued adding the highlights to each of the ink blended layers and then placing those onto the base flower using the triangle as a guide. I love the texture and the dimension that all of the different layers and the different shading on the cardstock give this flower. Now I did watch a video by Deepa Robbins that helped me understand how to put this together a little bit better. So I will be sure to link her video in that description box below if you want to check it out. I do want you to see how everything goes together, so I am going to continue putting it together on camera, but I'm just going to turn on a little background music. Isn't this finished flower so gorgeous? Now because I am going to use option two from the packaging, I did need three total flowers, so I prepared the other two off camera. I still needed to make the leaves for my flowers, and for this I'm going to be using a tone on tone ink blend once again, but I only have to ink blend one of the layers for each of the leaves. Then, just like before, I'm going to use the diagram on the packaging to put on the highlights. For the first leaf, it is just a single highlight piece, so I add adhesive to the back and get it lined up with that bottom layer. For the second one, each of the leaves had a little highlight on the tip, so I used the diagram to figure out which went with which and then got those adhered with the liquid adhesive, once again taking a little time after it was placed down to make sure it was lined up right with the edges of the bottom layer. Once again, I love how those ink blended layers and their highlights give such dimension to each of the pieces. Just like before, I do need three total sets, so I finish the other two off camera. Now I'm going to build that peony. For this, I'm going to use the packaging, and even though it says not to scale, it is pretty close. So I'm going to be building my flower right onto the little card. To do this, I die cut a circle from that blue cardstock and I'm going to tack that down temporarily to the packaging. It is a little slick, so later it will be easy to pull up. Now I'm going to figure out where each of the flowers I just created will go, lining them up as best as I can with the printed version. Once that's done, I'm going to be using liquid glue once again to hold everything in place. As I built the flower, sometimes the liquid glue would go onto the die cut circle, other times it would go on top of the petals that I had already placed. A couple times I did over glue, but I just wiped that away with my fingers. Good thing this glue dries clear. I let this dry off camera for about 5 minutes, and while I was waiting, I cut a piece of white cardstock to 4 by 5 and a quarter and ran that through a wood grain embossing folder. I thought that this rough texture looked great up against the delicate flower. Using liquid glue, I adhered the floral piece to the top center of my card. I did only add adhesive to where the die cut circle is, and I let that dry for about 5 minutes. Now because I had only adhered the center of the back of that, I'm now going to be able to tuck my leaves in behind the flowers. 
I spent a little time arranging them so that there were a couple coming out from each of the flowers and I didn't want them to stick too far out from the white cardstock just so it stayed within the constraints of my card base. Once I got that figured out, which it did take me a little time, I brought back in the liquid glue and I put a little behind each of the leaf petals. I didn't really need to adhere down the stems because they were already tucked behind the flowers. And just like before, I let this dry for a little while off camera. Once that was dry, I added it to a blue card base, and to make my personal message easy to read, I put a piece of white cardstock on the inside, and I added a little of the blue color to the bottom of that with my blending brush. Now it's time to add the sentiment, and for this I'm using that three layer high die. I will be die cutting with some scraps I have that match the card. The word high I cut from white cardstock and I will add that to its green mat, the same green that I use for the leaves. And then finally, that matted word gets added to a vellum shadow. This way you can still see some of the card behind where the shadow lays. Once all of the layers were together, I figured out exactly where on the card I wanted it to go, and then I tried to put liquid glue behind where it wouldn't be seen through the vellum and only where it would touch the flower. Now because that flower did have so many layers, the bottom little swirlies were just kind of hanging there. So I brought in a small piece of double-sided sticky foam and added that below the swoosh on the bottom. That way it was just a little bit more level. To finish off the sentiment, I wanted to add one of the companion stamps on the high stamp set. I chose the word there so the card would read hi there. I stamped this onto a scrap of white cardstock with black ink. Then off camera, I cut it down to a smaller size, adding a little angled cut over on the right. I also added foam to the back so it would be popped up at about the same level as the word high, and then I got that tucked in behind the eye and adhered in place. I also added some sequins, and here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this beautiful peony card using products from Crafty Meraki. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to check out the other artists on the hop by using the playlist link in the description box. And also remember to fill out that raffle copter for the giveaway. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.